morning. Today we're going to go look at a place called Dayton, Nevada, which has a long, rich history in the state. It's well over 400 miles from my home in Las Vegas. However, it's only about 13, 14 miles due east of Carson City. Not a very long trip. In fact, it's such a short trip that I don't even need a full-size cup of coffee. I only need this to get me out there and back. So let's go out to Dayton, Nevada. We'll check out the history and let's go explore. Dayton is an unincorporated community uh, located in Lyon County, only about 15 miles east along the Highway 50 from Carson City, Nevada. Its current day population is somewhere north of 15,000 inhabitants. Today, Dayton is a modern uh, community but it has a rich history that goes back to the 1850s. With this video, we're going to explore the history. It is agreed by many historians that Genoa, or Mormon Station, is Nevada's first town. It is where the state's first territorial government was formed. Many other historians believe Dayton is Nevada's earliest permanent Euro-American settlement. Its roots were established at the mouth of the Golden Canyon, with continuous inhabitation from the spring of 1851, at least two weeks earlier than Mormon Station or Genoa. A Nevada historian discovered a handwritten diary that was kept by Lucina Puffer Parsons of 1851. Her diary was written two weeks prior to the creation of the Mormon Station or Genoa's permanent foundation. Her diary entry of May 28th of 1851 states that they arrived via wagon train in Golden Canyon where they spent 12 days camping and digging for gold. She documented daily events innocently noting on June 5th of 1851 that John Reese, the man historians recognize as establishing Mormon Station, stopped near her camp carrying supplies to establish a trading post in Carson Valley. Until John Reese arrived that first week in June of 1851 at what would become Mormon Station or Genoa, no one had lived there permanently. However, miners inhabited Gold Canyon before either Parsons or Reese passed through this area. Some Nevada historians claim Gold Canyon was not inhabited continuously between 1851 and 1859 but others say documentation supports Dayton's claim of being the first settlement in Nevada. Dayton is located at the western end of the 40-mile desert at the bend of the Carson River. Emigrants stopped there for water and would decide whether to follow the river south or continue west, given the location its first name, Ponder's Rest. The 40-mile desert refers to a barren stretch of waterless alkali wasteland. It was the most dreaded section of the California Immigrant Trail. If possible, it was traveled by night because of the great heat. The route was first traveled by the Walker Childs Party in 1843 with the first wagon train. Regardless of its horrors, it became the accepted route. The 40-mile desert was the most dreaded portion of the entire California Trail. The immigrants would try to time it such that they began to cross the desert starting late in the afternoon. Then they would cross all night long, resting in the day and crossing at night because of the extreme heat. As record shows, there was also a great loss of animals during this section of that trail. There was no water for the entire 40 miles. In 1850, a survey was done and found that 1,000 mules were dead, 5,000 horses succumbed to the heat, and 3,750 head of cattle. Also, there were 954 graves were found. It was a tremendous loss to both lives and property in this 40-mile section of the California Trail. This portion of the trail became so infamous that Mark Twain wrote, it would hardly be an exaggeration to say that we could have walked the 40 miles and set our feet on a bone at every step. To add difficulty to this route, there's an area known as the Fernley Swales, located north of Fernley 
It's the last seven miles of the passage of the 40-mile desert. This is on the Truckee route. To give you an idea of the hardships that these folks endured, there's a few entries that were made into some diaries. Here's one that states the last seven miles is a sandbank where the traveling is of the heaviest description and very laborious to walk over. Numbers were compelled to do as we did and send on their stock to grass and water and recruit them back. Here's another diary entry that reads, This day we were scarcely were out of smell of putridity. Not less than 200 carcasses of oxen and horses are strewn along the road within the last seven miles, some moping about waiting for death and no possibility of other relief. It was the spring of 1849 when a frontiersman by the name of Abner Blackburn left Salt Lake City for the California gold fields. His handwritten diary tells the story of Nevada's first gold discovery. In the spring, I joined a pack train for the gold mines, he wrote. The pioneers followed the Carson River route. While laid over in Gold Canyon waiting to cross the Sierra Nevada mountains, Abner found Nevada's first gold. He described the unforgettable moment in his journal. I took a bread pan and a butcher knife and went into the ravines to prospect and found gold in small quantities in three different places. Went to a larger ravine where the water run down over a bedrock a little on the side of a gulch. Dug down in the slate and found a fair prospect kept panning for an hour or more. Went to camp, and all hands grabbed up pans, knives, kettles, and started out. We scratched, scraped, and panned until nearly sundown, and took nine or ten dollars worth of gold. Being without tools and nearly out of provisions, we were compelled to abandon the place, but calculated to return. But the 22-year-old Abner Blackburn couldn't resist the lure of the California gold rushes and pushed on, never dreaming his discovery would lead to one of the world's greatest bonanzas. His discovery touched off an eastbound gold rush of California miners and paved the way for discovery of one of the richest mineral troves ever, any event that would change the face of Nevada and the West. What Blackburn didn't know at the time was the gold that he found came from a massive underground pocket of gold and silver, now known as the Comstock Lode, located several miles up the canyon from Dayton, which later became Virginia City and Silver City. Blackburn settled down in 1852 in San Bernardino, California, where he became a constable, farmer, and miner. He married and fathered nine children. Blackburn failed to cash in on the Comstock Lode, and spent much of his life in poverty. He died in 1904 in San Bernardino. Dayton, by the 1850s, was just a settlement of placer miners who worked the mouth of the Golden Canyon. Many Chinese immigrants eventually lived here as well. Some called the community Chinatown, but it also went by several other names. In 1861, the town officially adopted the name of Dayton after John Day, a local surveyor. He was later elected as Nevada Surveyor General in 1868, and he served that post until 1878. Well, that pretty much sums up the history of Dayton and the founding of Nevada and the establishment of this area. From this point forward, we will go back and see what Dayton looks like today and compare it to the history of yesterday. What a great, rich history we have here. I'm walking down the boardwalk of a building that was built in 1863. It was one of the original community centers. At one time it had burned down. Actually, they say it had burned down two times, but it had gotten rebuilt during that period of time. Also served as a hardware store. Quite interesting to see the old boardwalks. This building was known as Odeon Hall or Odeon Saloon.
This is an old historical photo showing the Odeon Hall and Saloon there on the left. We're looking northerly on Pike Street. This building behind me was built in the 1860s, originated as a firehouse, and also, from what I read, had mail order jail cells in the back. Ironically, this building built down, uh, burned down twice the firehouse, believe it or not, once in the 1860s and then once in the 1870s. Rebuilt that both times. Kind of interesting. Taking a walk down the side of this structure here, which was at least one or a few times a fire station. And also, as I read, it had some jail cells in behind it. You can see that old lock there. And some of the cells themselves. I'm not sure if that outside is part of a remodel or if it was the original. A lot of times they didn't have that outside stucco. So it's hard to say, but I think they said they had nine cells, which is quite a bit actually. But the primary function was a firehouse. After a disastrous fire in 1867, a small hand pumper was purchased and water storage cisterns were created under Pike and Gate Streets. This is a photo from 1900 of the Hooneman hand pumper. This building at one time also served as a jailhouse. When the Lyon County Courthouse in Dayton burned in 1909, these jail cells were moved to this location. The finish on the... Uh, on this side of the building, I was wondering, it looked rather modern. And as it turns out, over time, floods in the Cold Creek between 1861 and 1955 deposited sediments in the basement, weakening the wooden pier supporting the upper floor. In 2008, the Historical Society of Dayton Valley stabilized the building's foundation and replaced floor supports rehabilitated the building's doors and window frames, installed a retaining wall adjacent to the creek, and erosion protection along the creek bed. This building is uh, just a 1860s stone building. It's located right at the corner of Pike Street and Main Street. The first business in, in this early 1816 buildings was M. Meyer & Company, a grocery store. By the mid-1870s, it had become Meyer & Klegman Hardware and Supplies. However, the building is more commonly known as the Braun and Loftus building. Their mercantile initially housed a drugstore. Loftus then went into dry goods, and Braun opened a grocery store across the street on the east side of the Union Hotel. In the 1930s, the back of the building housed an auto repair business, with the front portion being a saloon known as the Old Corner Bar. Today it is a dinner house and a bar. This building is just an old church. The spot was originally the site of a confectory and a toy store. 1937, the Nearington Roman Catholic Indian School Church was moved here and renamed Dayton Senior Anne's Catholic Church. In the late 1950s, the building underwent extensive remodeling. Although they built a larger church at another Dayton site, the church still owns and maintains this historical structure. It's not open to the public at this time. This building is referred to the Camel Compound. It was originally opened up as the Leslie Hay Barn, and it was built in 1861. Over the next 10 years, camels were corralled at this site. They were used to haul salt, wood, and other mining supplies to mines and mills in the Gold Hill and Silver City areas. The complex was one of six hay yards located in Dayton in this time period. Camels were imported into the United States for military purposes in the mid-1850s. Lieutenant Edward Beale of the U.S. Army tested the animals for possible caravan operations in the deserts of the Southwest. The experiment was not successful and the camels were auctioned off. 
These camels were later abandoned to fend for themselves. Few were ever seen after the 1880s. This was the site of the 1864 Lyon County Courthouse, which burned to the ground in 1909. Dayton remained the county seat until 1911, when the legislator moved it to Yearington. Utilizing the foundational ruins, the high school was built on the site in 1918. The facility was used as a high school in the, until 1959. The building was also used uh, for an elementary school. In 1972, the building was reactivated as a junior high school. It later became the Dayton Community Center. This building is uh, Dayton's historic grammar school, and it was built in 1865 and used constantly or continuously until uh, 1958. In 1880, there were 80 pe people attending the school. It is the oldest schoolhouse in the state that is still located at its original site. Later, the building became Dayton's Senior Center and reused until a new one was built in the 1980s. In the 1990s, the county gave stewardship of the old schoolhouse to the Historical Society, who made it uh, today's Dayton's Museum. This building is one of the oldest buildings in the entire city of Dayton. It's an old wagon and carriage house. This site was the site of a doctor's office, a drugstore, and Dr. John Clark Hazlitt's residence. Dr. Hazlitt was also an attorney, state senator, and Lyon County DA. He continued practicing medicine from 1862 until his death in 1895. Here we are walking along the southerly side of Main Street, uh, heading west. This cluster of buildings was built in the 1860s, and it was also it was burned in uh, July of 1870 and rebuilt after that. So some of these are uh, private building, private residences. Just fun to explore and walk along the uh, boardwalk. Old buildings, quite impressive. I'm walking around uh, Main Street of uh, Dayton right now. This was also the same path that the Pony Express used and uh, where the Immigrant Trail came along. The buildings behind me are from the 1860s, the Fox Hotel. Next door to it was a uh, post office. And then the building over there, red, was a grocery store. And then you got the Union Hotel. That's actually a private residence today. Some more of the downtown area as I'm walking along. Right down here in downtown Dayton, Nevada. Mostly a very modern place, but there's a lot of these older, original buildings from the 1860s. You can see as you continue to look down. Main Street. This is an historical photo of the Union Hotel. It's said to be uh, dated from the 1870s. Looks like somebody was having some kind of big celebration at that hotel. This is the back side of what it looks like today along that uh, cluster of buildings that were built in the 1860s. This is a noteworthy corner at Main and Pike the original site of the Europa Bar. The first structure at this location was a residence that burned down in the 1866 fire. In 1906, M. Kwaliki built a hotel and saloon, also incorporating the former Umberto Saloon. The building was later known as the Kwaliki Mercantile Building. That structure was destroyed during a 1980 arson fire. You can see an historical photo of that building as well, right there on the corner. It stands behind the building where the sign says store. Today, this site is just a parking lot, and it also is a, a location of where they have Pony Express monuments. This beautiful hand quarried building was originally the Birdsall Mercantile. It was built in the 1860s and was constructed with hand-quarried sandstone, surmised to have been come from a small quarry off of Pike Street. Research indicates 
that at one time it also served as a Wells Fargo and Company agency. Eventually it became a Bluestone Manufacturing Company. Bluestone was a chemical used in separating gold and silver ores from tailings. Over the years, the building fell into disrepair and began to disintegrate. Through various land exchanges, the property and building were eventually donated to Lyon County in 1984, and the building was restored. Today, it serves as the Dayton Justice Center complex. The 1881 Carson and Colorado Railroad Depot is pictured here in 1914 at its original site on the railroad street, and it was later reconfigured to be a Southern Pacific Depot. Southern Pacific had purchased the railroad in 1900, and by 1904 it had changed it from a narrow gauge to a standard gauge railroad. However, after business waned, the Southern Pacific closed the depot in 1934. It stood empty for years and then became a residence later on. This is a funeral procession being held at the Dayton Cemetery at a site that was officially designated in 1861. Pioneer settlers recalled when another burial ground was located just below the present-day cemetery on the hillside. But the grave sites began washing away and with them the remains of such notables as James Old Virginia, after whom Virginia City is named, Finney and George Claggett. Their remains were later moved to the official cemetery and their tombstones are visible today. The Dayton Cemetery was founded in 1851. This is one of the oldest constantly maintained cemeteries in Nevada. Many people buried here are Italian Americans as this ethnic group dominated much of Dayton's early history. Recognizing the potential of the land and the irrigating value of the Carson River, Italian Americans made this area the breadbasket for the Comstock. Much of the information that I have presented here in this video was taken from a beautifully produced brochure that was created by the Historical Society of Dayton Valley. Another great resource of information is, uh, was a bestseller called Images of America, Dayton, by Laura Tennant and Jack Fulmar. Well, this concludes my uh, short historical presentation of uh, Dayton, Nevada. I hope you all enjoyed that uh, video as much as I did making the video. Please uh, hit the uh, like button and the share button and the subscribe button. It's very helpful. Thank you.